G'day again, Nathan here from KLR, back for another video for you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about our dryer flanges, why they're important and why they're a problem. But let's first talk about what they do. Your dryer flange bolts to your hub and it transfers your power from your axle or your CV joint to your wheel. Now, I'm no mechanic, but I do sell a lot of our dryer flanges and I know that they're a problem. But to give us a bit more of a technical insight into why they're a problem, I'm gonna call him Brad. Brad, now look, in front of us, we've got a lot of our Land Rover dry flanges and axles. Why are we selling so many of them? Why are we having to make a video about these to uh, explain their problems? Yeah, well actually, I think you've got a pretty good idea, Nathan, but look, first of all, this is the problem. Excessive wear, unwanted movement, and they can get to the stage they strip out. But before we get into too much detail here, let's just have a quick little history lesson to work out how we arrived here. So in the original Range Rover Classic, they had one piece dry flanges and axles. It was a very clever design. There was no spline there, nothing that could wear out. But as time went on, Land Rover, for whatever reason, went to a two piece setup, similar to what they'd been running on the series vehicles, but it had oil lubricating the spline. So it wasn't too bad. Yes, you did get long term wear after many hundreds of thousands of kilometres, but the oil did its job. It absorbed the shock. It lubricated the spline. Everything was hunky dory. But Land Rover's always had a problem of keeping oil where the oil should be. So one of their solutions was to stop putting oil in the dry flange. They had a little rubber cap on the end. They put a seal halfway up the axle here to stop the diff oil getting through to the, uh, through to the spline itself. And they ran it dry. This was nothing short of a disaster. Moisture got in there, it dried out, a little bit of rust formed, you get a little bit of wear, a little bit of wear becomes a lot of wear, and before you know it, you've got massive backlash every time you take your foot off the clutch, every time you hit the brake, and in a worst case scenario, it can actually strip the spline out altogether. Now Brad, with that, we're gonna strip the spline out, and you talked about a backlash. What is the backlash when it comes to that axle and how are people going to know that they're going to have backlash or that busted spline? Yeah, well, strictly speaking, backlash is any lost movement, so movement that shouldn't be there. Now, when you let the clutch up and you want to drive off, you want everything nice and tight so the drive's transmitted all the way to the axles and to the wheels without any clunking, banging, any delay. But what happens when you get a bit of wear in here, as I showed you before, that's movement that has to be taken up. And the worse that gets, the more of a run up the axle gets and then bang, it jumps into engagement and you get that thump through the vehicle. Yeah, and right. as time goes on, that gets worse. Right, now, just to finish up our little history lesson here, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the, well, let's call them a low profile dry flange. In the 90s, Land Rover decided that they wanted to fit, um, or they started offering factory alloy rims so on the Defenders, on the Discovery Ones, and of course, the last of the Range Rover Classics. Now, to be able to fit those alloys on, they had to go to a low profile dry flange. And the way they did that was basically by shortening this spline and the dry flange by 10 millimetres. So if you look here, here's an old one, here's a new version. Now this made an already existing problem even worse because you had even less material there now to wear away. So it became an even bigger problem pretty much from the 90s onwards. Well tell us then Brad, we spoke about backlash. How does somebody know that they've got backlash it within their dry flange or somewhere else within their dry train. Yeah, well, if somebody thinks they've got uh, any sort of backlash, Nathan, it's pretty easy to work out. It's easier with two people. Uh, if you've got an alloy wheel, you'll probably need to take it off to take off this little rubber cap. It normally lives on the end here to seal the end of the, uh, the spline to stop any uh, foreign body getting in and, and oil and grease getting out. But you need to take that off. Then the next step is you need to put your wheel back on. If it's an alloy wheel or a factory alloy wheel, just pop the centre cap out of it so you can see down the middle. Put your wheel back on, leave the wheel sitting on the ground. Now you need somebody to rotate the rear prop shaft for you and they just need to get underneath there and wriggle it back and forth. So what you're doing is you're looking down the end here and I'll replicate what the prop shaft is going to do when you're trying to turn the axle and you can see there's movement back and forth there and in fact you can even hear the clunking. You won't necessarily hear clunking when you're only moving it by hand because you're not putting that much effort on it but you can see movement. Now one thing I would say this particular axle and dry flange here came off a 2014 Defender I think it was. Uh, it had about 100,000 kilometres on it. It wasn't actually too bad. Uh, we've certainly seen a lot lot worse but this was just one uh, the first one actually I pulled out of the scrap bin and cleaned up for you guys to have a look at. So with that Brad that one saying that that's pretty good and it's still sound and clunky how am I to know that what a good dry flange looks like? To be honest Nathan a good one will have no movement. Simple as that. If you've got movement there, you've got backlash, you need to replace it. 
Now, the last point I'd raise here though, Nathan, if somebody is actually looking for dry, uh, backlash in their drivetrain, and they're still running original genuine axles with the original genuine drive flanges, you've got wear there. It's as simple as that. They wear. They came off the showroom floor with wear, and if you can afford it, replace them. Well, I guess that's where I come in because we sell a lot of our heavy duty dry flanges. But Brad, explain to us why are these gonna be the, the solution to this problem? Yeah, well, there's actually a couple of reasons, Nathan, but first, what I'd like to say is we offer two different types of uh, heavy-duty drive flanges. We've got the top-quality Australian-made Maxi Drive Engineering one, top quality, premium quality, good as it can get. But we also offer a less expensive aftermarket version. Now, we batch hardness test uh, these uh, just to make sure the quality is what it needs to be when we're selling to you guys. Now, uh, I did start by saying these solve a few problems. Now, one of the problems that will solve is you've got a screw-on cap. This does away with this horrible plastic thing that doesn't seal anything, and that keeps all the oil in there where the oil should be. Now, that leads nicely into the next point, oil. Not only are these a better quality material, whether it's the aftermarket one or the maxi drive one, they're also machined to tighter tolerances, so they are a tight fit on the spline. In fact, if you're using a new axle as well, they're often a press fit. In fact, I can't get that on there at all. So uh, that's a good thing. But coming back to our oil, when we fit these dry flanges, whether it's the maxi drive one or the aftermarket one, we remove the inner axle seals. And that allows diff oil to migrate through to that spline. And that oil getting up into that spline takes all the shock loading. So it gives you a much, much longer life in that spline. In fact, with a set of the maxi drive ones in particular, you'll probably never need to replace them again. Now, Brad, you've just put a brand new flange on a brand new axle. Is that what we should be doing every time? Yeah, well, basically, yes, Nathan. It's actually poor practice to put a new flange on a worn axle or a new spline on a worn spline because obviously you're going to start wearing the new spline out much quicker. So we do suggest while a new dry flange will go a long way to solving the problem, if there's anywhere on your axle spline as well, you probably need to replace that too. But this gets back to what I was just talking about where putting these on allows you to run oil in there, gets lubrication in that spline, they'll last much, much better. Right, so Brad, you've talked about replacing the axle. Is there anything else we need to replace while we're doing these? Yeah, well, and I've, I've sort of hinted at this all through, but one of the things we do as well when we go to these uh, better quality dry flanges, we fit a better quality hub seal. This is the old school county one. Um, we'll put the part number up on the screen for you, but you can see there's a spring on the outside, a spring on the inside, double lipped oil seal. That'll actually allow you to run oil into your wheel bearings and the oil will actually stay in there. And then the other thing we normally do as well, dry flange bolts. They're all pretty old by now. They get hit with rattle guns and what have you. They get, you know, threads get damaged, the bolts get stretched. We normally replace those as well. Now, Brad, while these are our rear axles, let's not forget about our front. Same problem, same solution. These dry flanges are model specific. So if you have any questions, please contact us or go to klr.com.au for more information. Thanks for watching. See you next time.